so uh -huh. I had to cough up a, a real nickel. An actual uh -huh. coin. Yeah. Yeah, well, here in Florida, I'm not sure how close all the states are on that, but uh, the maximum you can get is about two hundred dollars for yeah, a person. Yeah, that's what I get. Yeah, and uh, I I've always kept track of how much I spend on food for years for some reason. I I only spend probably uh, under hundred and fifty easily. Uh, well, mine has been running about three hundred, but two hundred I can get by on. Yeah. Yeah, I, I probably buy less expensive stuff than the average person. I tend to buy very little meat, so that cuts down a lot. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, a lot of vegetables and, and fruits. And I'm usually fairly careful on, uh, you know, what kind of stuff I buy, too, so I don't buy, like, the most expensive uh, fruits or stuff that's, uh, that's out there. And try to buy stuff that's on sale, of course. And, uh, yeah. fortunately, for sure, we got to store our store here in my little town is one of these little discount places where you bag your own groceries and everything so the prices are pretty good yeah but we have we have another store a Win dixie store which is just kind of a big chain and uh those prices are about 50 percent more than the other store yeah i just put on a pot of beans in my crock pot i bought an onion and i chopped up four jalapenos and i put some uh you know uh Bacon trimmings or whatever package uh -huh. in there, and I'm going to cook them up overnight, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I tend, and I, since I use my microwave pretty much all the time, I always pick stuff that's real simple to fix. You know, it's <laughs> a lot of frozen vegetables, uh, stuff that yeah, I Yeah, I've got a out. couple of bags of frozen vegetables. I bought some, I treated myself today, I bought some hamburger patties. Oh, yeah. And I rarely, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I I, uh, I have been for years buying this uh, turkey, ground turkey stuff that's fairly inexpensive and easy to mm -hmm. microwave. But but uh, in the last few months, I've noticed my store has uh, boneless breast chicken on sale. Mm -hmm. So I've been buying that, and it's pretty, you know, you got to thaw it out because it's frozen, but it's fairly easy to uh, microwave. The only thing which I had forgotten since I haven't really fixed chicken for years is all the fat that comes out of that thing. Yeah. And uh, I'm just not used to seeing so much fat coming out of my food. Yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of shocking to see a pan full of fat every time I microwave that stuff. Well, what I do occasionally is I, I haven't done it lately, but uh, I'll buy a whole chicken. I'll cut uh -huh. it up, you know, skin the fat off of it. And I'll put it in a crock pot on low overnight, and I'll throw some garlic and peppers in there and just cook it down. And then yeah. the next day, I separate out the bones, and then I make a, a huge casserole. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, lately I, I've been, uh, well, I'd say about three months ago, I'd been watching this Dr. Oz show on TV, and he gives all these tips all the time. And unfortunately, I get so many tips, you'd never be able to do them all. But I kind of got out of it uh, that I'd be a lot better off if I cut down on stuff that had added sugar and added fat and salt. Mm -hmm. So I kind of really switched over to, uh, I got some of this uh, uh, Truvia sweetener that's made out of stevia, yeah. and that's supposed yeah. to be pretty yeah. healthy. I've got some of that, yeah. And so I eliminated all the... Uh, other sweeteners that I've been using because it, it seemed to me and he and he was saying that you can almost have some craving for that stuff and I think that's true because since I've been using this Truvia I have a lot less craving for sweet stuff than I ever did so I think well, that's you know, I don't I use honey and uh, and that Truvia but when I go to the store I just walk right on past the ice cream the donuts, I just walk right past it. I don't even buy them. Yeah, well, I do, I do now, but I'll tell you, three or four months ago, I couldn't pass the ice cream section uh, usually. I would, I would literally get a gallon of ice cream, and in one day, it would be gone. I, I just could not yeah. help myself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And now, I, I'm almost thinking it has something to do with this Truvia that uh, has eliminated my craving for sugar or something. It's just kind of remarkable mm -hmm. that I don't even 
think about. Well, I have to admit, I think about that ice cream when I pass it, but I don't have a real driving desire to open the door and get some out of the freezer thing. <laughs> And plus, I've been eating. Well, I've had had I've been, I had uh, honey. I used to bake with honey and use honey, but I think I read or heard somewhere that that is not necessarily a good thing because it's really like a sugar. In fact, I read something this week. Hey, FK, haven't seen you for a while. Hello. Uh, I got uh, I read something a couple days ago that somebody did a study of honey f that you buy in a typical store. Mm -hmm. and, all of the pollen has been removed from that stuff because what they do is they filter it so that it doesn't have any impurities and so it won't uh, crystallize. Mm. And by the time they filter it, all of the pollen is out of there, which is the stuff that you really want. So mm. basically, th the stuff you buy in a regular store is basically just sugar. That's all that's left. Mm -hmm. I, I never knew that before. Mm. It's, and I took a look at my, the jar of honey I had to see if it indicated whether it was filtered or where it came from. But supposedly a lot of this stuff is coming from China, and they've got all kinds of taxes they put on Chinese honey, so they fake people out by filtering it, so there's no way they can test it to they find out where it came from. They can test it say the origin, yeah. yeah. Exactly, yeah, and, the, and the pollen yeah. is how they can test it. Hey, Lisa, how are you well, doing? Well, you know, they've been blending. Great. How are you doing? Good. We were just talking with uh, Ron here about honey. <laughs> the, yeah. was, uh, well, you know, they've been, they've been blending right. uh, honey for years. Argentina, yeah. Europe, uh, yeah. Right. Well, see, and that's legitimate, uh, except for the Chinese are getting around the law by uh, giving their honey, or people from other countries will buy the Chinese honey, and then say it came from Argentina or something. Mm -hmm, yeah. And, and there's and there's since they've taken out all the pollen, there's no way of finding out where it came from. Yeah. <laughs> so so apparently, if you go to like any store, uh, you're buying honey that's basically just sugar because they removed all the pollen. Mm -hmm. Don, I think you have a you are wrong on this point because my father, my uh, grandfather, has uh, a lot of bees and. Uh, he has them for uh, a very long time, and uh, uh -huh. I think the filtering uh, is done to remove the unprocessed pollen. Do you know how honey is made? Yeah, we have a honey store here, and uh, we have fairly big beekeeping uh, outfits here in uh, this town, so I'm fairly familiar. But so he, when he uh, filters it. He doesn't filter out all of the pollen. He just filters out like the insect parts and the wax and that kind of thing, right? Um, because I know that uh, honey is made by uh, by the bees. They right. take the pollen and uh -huh. they chew it right. several times, a lot actually. But I don't know the exact number. My grandfather does, and maybe they filter the unprocessed pollen. To leave the, only the pure honey. Yeah. Well, the the way you're supposed to do it is uh, you, you have like a mesh or something, and you you want to filter out like any bee parts or any part of the uh, the uh, the wax thing, whatever they call that, so that you just get basically the honey. But there'll still be some pollen in it. But some uh, big companies take the honey and put it through special machines that literally removes all of the pollen. So it's it's basically just uh, glucose and sucrose or whatever it is. So you're basically just buying sugar. But if you buy it from a local beekeeper or a local company, then it's supposedly a lot better because you'll still have some of the pollen in your honey. I know but it's the case with my grandfather because uh, everyone knows that he has uh, bees and for a... Uh, a very, 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 very long time, and uh, we have so many requests that we can't give everyone. Oh, yeah. Wow. Bees can the only honey work so delicious. fast. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I have, uh, for the last several years, I've actually had bees in the wall of my house. 
I discovered there was a little small hole about the size of a coin, and they decided that would be a good place to uh, go into and put a hive inside my wall. So it's in my bathroom where the shower is. One time I heard this uh, noise, and I thought it was a leak in the water. And then when I started investigating, I saw all these bees going in and out of the hall, the wall outside. And so there's just thousands, there were thousands of bees inside my wall for years. Now, I think they've left. I haven't seen them for several months. Um, but I, w I was told that I should actually open up that wall and take out all of the honey. Otherwise, there'll be some kind of weird insects that get in there and will cause problems later on. Well, if you're in Florida, I'm, I imagine you could possibly have a roach infestation. I'm going for the sugar. Yeah. Yeah, well, the bee folks were telling me there's some sort of a moth that uh, typically goes after those beehives. And so you get this some sort of a moth in there. And uh, so supposedly they get to the honey before the roaches or anything else. But, uh, well, yeah, I, I don't guess know if, any. I don't know if the other gentlemen are very, uh, uh, know what life in Florida is like, but everything is, uh, you don't keep much paper, you don't keep cardboard, you spray around all your wiring, uh, you, you just fight the roaches all the time, and they're like this big. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. They that, just, you know, true. open the door and they fly in the house. <laughs> Yeah. You keep you keep banana trees away from your house. Yeah, I've never had any banana trees here, but uh, uh, they certainly get in. You think the house is sealed up pretty good, but uh, boy, they get in somehow. I think they just walk in when you're bringing in groceries. I really do. Yeah. Well, I remember when I first <laughs> came to Florida, my mother came to visit and was visiting a friend. And the friend brought my mom over to my house to visit, and I wanted to give my mom some uh, coconuts that were, at that time, he had a lot of coconuts from the trees. And the, uh, my mom's friend says, oh, no, no, we can't take that coconut in my car because there might be roaches in it. And mm -hmm. <laughs> I've never heard of such a thing at the time, oh, but and she was you don't, real cautious. Uh, yeah, you don't uh, transfer cardboard boxes from garages into your house. So you take everything out and check. It's just pretty weird, you know. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a peculiar place in Florida. And I oh, and I got to I got to Texas, and my husband was you know he saw a roach in the kitchen. He went oh, a roach, and I looked at it, and it was this big. I said, Oh Lord, that is not a roach. <laughs> <laughs> That's a roach. <laughs> yeah. Now, what kind of uh, bugs do you have in in uh, Texas that are the bothersome ones? Well, they, you know, they're just not all that impressive when you come from Florida. Um, you know, like the like the scorpions, like they're about this big, and they're beige. I mean, they hurt when they sting you, but I'm used to scorpions in Florida being as big as your hand and black. You know, they yeah. look like a, from a from a horror movie. And, um, you know, snakes, I mean, you get, uh, we get, in Florida, you got cotton mouse in your garage, you know, unless the cats oh, yeah. you know, played, played with them. But I, Don said, where the hell did you come from? <laughs> Florida's <laughs> dangerous. <laughs> but well, the I first house time, I, go ahead. I, I, had a, I had a little house when I first moved to Texas, and my husband walked in the bathroom, and he went, oh! And I said, what? And he said, scorpions. And there were two little bitty scorpions in the bathtub. And I looked at them like this, and I stomped on them. And I said, no scorpions. Uh, <laughs> well, the first house that I moved into down here in uh, central southwest Florida, uh, it was like a fairly new house, and, and I don't think any people had lived in it before, but it had been empty for some time. And uh, I went into the second bathroom, opened up the toilet, and started to use it. And there was a snake in the bowl of the toilet. <laughs> and I could not wow. figure out why a snake would be there or how it got there. 
So I, there are things you don't want to know. Yeah, well, and, and I'm trying. You know, I try to make friends with all the little creatures. So I managed to get the snake and take it out to the little canal that was outside. And a few days later, I went to use that toilet again, and it was back. <laughs> and so the nearest I can figure is that the snake was climbing down the vent pipe that's on the roof, and he found a nice dark place with some water, and that was his home. So I, I got him out well again, yeah, and he never did screen, come back. Put a screen on the vent, didn't you? Yeah. Well, no, I didn't. It just never came back. But I always uh, make sure I look before I sit down now. <laughs> well, I tell people it's hysterical. I said, you know, when people talk about bugs and spiders and snakes here, I said, I'm from Florida. You check before you put your hand and your or your foot or your butt anywhere. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> Well, I remember I was in Miami one time, and uh, I, I was in this little apartment that did have a fairly big roach program or problem, and I'd spray and spray, and man, I just couldn't get rid of them. But uh, w one day I had a little coffee mug out there, and I was going to mix up something to drink, and I, I was probably mixing up cocoa because that's kind of one of my favorite things. So I mixed up my little cocoa and went to drink it and felt a big lump of something go into my throat and it was a roach. <laughs> so the roach oh. had been hiding in this cup and it, oh. I'll tell, I can tell you that roaches are bitter. Oh. Other than that, you don't want to experience that. Oh. Did you chew on it? Yeah, just slightly because I couldn't figure out what it was. So I, <laughs> I must have just crunched down and I felt that really bitter taste. It was just they have awful. A, they spray it. Uh, they've got a, and they exude something uh, for, for against predators. Uh -huh. And if you if you bother them, uh, you can actually smell them. Oh. So uh, wow. I think I'll go uh, take a little I break right now. <laughs> yeah, I hope nobody's <laughs> eating at this moment. <laughs> No, really but interesting. That's, that's, I was born. I was yeah. born and raised in Miami, so I know what you're talking about. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, but I haven't had uh, too much creature problems here. I have seen a few snakes outside. Uh, I've got a bunch of squirrels that I'm actually encouraging by feeding them, oh, and uh, there seems boy. to be an opossum. Yeah, I, I, there's a little hole that we have like cement foundations on these houses and there's no basement or anything. And there's a okay. hole under one of the corners and I can never figure out who or what is digging this hole. And then one early morning I saw a possum crawling around and that is apparently where the possum likes to hang out in this little hole at the corner of the house. If you need to, uh, if you really want to get rid of them, uh, two or three mothballs down there will keep out skunks and possums. Oh, okay. Well, that's good to know. They, they hate the smell. Yeah, yeah the squirrels, uh, I begin, began, I was feeding them peanuts, and one of them got friendly enough he'll actually take peanuts from my hand, and mm -hmm. then another one will come around and eat the peanuts, but he won't get that close. But that rascal found that there's a hole or a loose screen on my patio. So I'd have the uh, sliding glass door open to the house. And I'd look, well, in fact, it'd be right over there. And I'd see a squirrel coming up to get the peanuts that are in that. I don't think you see it, but there's a bag of peanuts there. So the squirrel comes into the house, grabs some peanuts, and then goes out through the little hole in the screen. I'll bet he doesn't share either. No. And, they, <laughs> and, and what, what's weird is they immediately go and hide. They bury these peanuts. And I'm thinking, how many peanuts do they really need to bury? It's just crazy. <laughs> oh, They'll and there were studies and, done at, that they don't actually remember uh, very many of them. Which really? is probably why they do it a lot. Yeah, oh. I think I can't remember what the studies were, but they really weren't that good at finding them again. Yeah, I know oh. they are a major factor of uh, spreading uh, trees around in uh, some areas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you mean because from they forget uh, most of the nuts and the trees grow <laughs> from oh, them. Oh yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. 
Although I don't think there are going to be any peanut plants growing here in Florida. <laughs> it's a little too hot. But uh, they do hang around our oak trees. We have a lot of oak trees, so that's probably true. The little acorns are going to grow into uh, oaks at some point if somebody doesn't mow them down with a lawnmower. Do you have any cats? I had some cats that I was taking care of for a friend, but uh, the cats had been taken back to their owner several months ago. Mm -hmm. If you have any uh, cats that are allowed outside or feral cats, they, t they pretty much keep down your uh, rodent and your snake population. Oh yeah, they'll, yeah, they'll they play would. with they'll play with and kill snakes, which is nice. Yeah, yeah. From time to because I had these cats for years, and they would from time to time bring in uh, baby squirrels, baby birds. Uh, I think a frog one time, but uh, no snakes. They'll if and, they're bored, they'll play with and kill snakes. Yeah, I would imagine, and Make a lot of lizard. little lizards. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What were you gonna say? Okay. Yeah, my cat does hunt uh, uh, hunts uh, snakes too, because my mother is uh, afraid of uh, snakes, and when she saw <laughs> when she saw the cat coming with a snake in, <laughs> in his uh -huh. house, <laughs> <laughs> I have a gift but for you. Yeah, I was I was kind of glad to see the cats going away because they were kind of bothersome to all the squirrels. I mean, they would they, they depend. It kind of seemed like it depended on their mood. If there was a squirrels out there, they'd sometimes try to sneak up on it, and sometimes they'd just sit there and watch. But uh, there's a lot more squirrel activity now that the cats are gone. I had one cat that was such a fierce hunter. We just didn't. We hardly had any birds at all. And I happen to know, just because he was such a terrible hunter or such a great hunter, that baby birds' heads are crunchy. Oh. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh boy. And I mean, he he had no shame. <laughs> He'd eat them right in front of me. It was awful. Oh man. Yeah, I never saw our the, our cats didn't seem to eat them. They uh, you know just bring them in like a trophy or something, and mm -hmm. I never saw them eat them. Probably because they were well fed. Yeah, that's probably. Hello, Vinny in Hawaii. How are you today? Hi, Vinny. Hi, everybody. We were There's just the man of about, the hour. Yeah, yeah. We've had a wide ranging discussion, Vinny, about. Uh, Cats, snakes, squirrels, roaches, <laughs> a little bit of everything in the last 20 minutes. Oh, and Vinny, or anybody, does anybody know what this might be? I found this uh, laying on the street. It's got a stereo plug on one end, and it almost kind of reminds me of one of those old things you used to put on telephones to record telephone conversations. I have no idea what it is. Do you know, um, shoot, I wish I knew what it was called. Uh, it may be a little uh, piezo conductor. A to, microphone. Uh, a microphone, oh. yeah, to put yes. on the, um, my husband put something like that on my um, ukulele and oh, plugged yeah. it into an amplifier. Yep. That's and nice. it, uh, could be that. Uh, yeah, I think you may be right. Because I was thinking it was some sort of a mic, but I didn't see any, uh, you know, typical things. But you could also, I think, I could put it on a desk, and the desk uh, operates as the uh, vibrating thing to pick up the mm -hmm. the sound. Uh, I think that, or does it have to be on something metallic to to work? Do you do you know? I think it just no, has to be solid. Yes, that's what I'm thinking. Anything solid. So ah. pickup, I think they're called. Yeah. Hang on, yeah. let me get an let me get an image. They use them on acoustic guitars to uh, pick up the sound. Yeah, my husband. Yeah, my husband put one on. Oh, here's a good image. Um, my husband put one on my ukulele. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'd I'd remember him from seeing him on uh, like 
returns where somebody's given a speech, they'd have one of these. Uh, in fact, I saw them in a church, and church used to use oh. it to, to put on the lectern, and uh, so you didn't have a visible mic sticking out. That's how I remember. Here's that. a link in the chat. What do you think of that? Is it close? John Arose. Let's see here. Although I was I thinking the ones that I saw had a uh, had a big, large <laughs> plate of some sort connected to it, but maybe that was for the use on a lectern or something. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Google Piezo pickup, and there are several kinds. Yeah, my computer's working slow here. Yeah, I think you nailed it there, Lisa. Think? Yep, I think so. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'll have to experiment with that. It's kind of an amazing technology. It's an old technology, I guess. It works by, uh, uh, what is it, uh, vibrating. You know, there's something inside that vibrates when a current or vibration makes the current or something like that. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's like a mic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. But what, what, what's the principle of piezo? Do you remember that? Something to do with a electrical, makes an electrical no, it's signal. No, when you bend a crystal. You bend a crystal and it, it uh, generates electricity. Oh, okay. So what would be the difference between piezo and a crystal mic? Well, piezoelectric is... It's just when you either deform you deform the crystal and it generates electricity. Uh, uh huh. Now I don't know crystal mic. Maybe it's the same terminology. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it could be. The piezoelectric is used in, in lighters. When you flick the thing, it bends a crystal and it generates enough electricity to create a spark. And it, oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. But well, also yeah. it could be uh, if the crystal is thin enough and and sound deforms it. It can uh -huh. generate electricity and you know convert it to uh, to uh, a signal, an audio uh, signal. Oh yeah, okay. A phone yeah. picture. Yeah, that looks exactly like what I've got. Except, what's that little thing at the bottom there? Is that uh, attached it's to the, the connection? Top? I think. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yep, that certainly looks like it. I'll have to experiment and see if it still works. Looks <laughs> like a car might have run over. It's a little. <laughs> Here's a post I did when I got toys for my ukulele. There's a uh, a link. Okay. Lisa, yeah. don't don't. Why don't you uh, use the screen share function? Oh, I don't know. I just don't think about it. <laughs> <laughs> Have you tried it? Oh yes. I just don't, I haven't used it enough to think about it right on time, you know, at the moment. I'll, I'll yeah, be doing is. that. In fact, yeah, well, I have to give a friend of mine. You're an Ankara? I mean, uh, uh, Tirana? Albania? Are you, are you talking to me? Yeah, yeah, Plumur? 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 Yes, I'm currently in Macedonia at home. I study in uh, Tirana. Yeah, I was going to show you something that I want to share with you. It's a uh, QSL card from Albania before they, uh, oh, my screen share is not working. No, I, 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 I can see your screen. Oh, okay. I can see yeah, it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there it is. Yeah, that's, uh, for many years ago, I got that card before they had the uh, the revolution or whatever. Uh, that was the uh, from Radio it, Toronto. Uh, oh, nice. It looks like uh, from the communist time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I, I I used to listen to Short Wave, and what I do, I listen to the station. I get details, and they would give out the mailing address, and I'd send the letter by, you know, air mail or whatever. Sometimes it, I think that took about two months before they mailed me back, but. Somebody that worked at the station, the radio engineer or whatever, he signed the card and said, yeah, you heard us on such, such frequency, and we were reading the news, and, you know, thanks for listening. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Ron is a collector of uh, QSL cards from radio yeah, that stations. One is, 
Yeah. That one was before. It, it's very old. I was very proud of that car because it's such an obscure, you know, place. Yeah. You know, nobody, nobody I knew around me even heard of Albania. Yeah, what's that? You know? I said, well, it's, it's a tiny country. It's been isolated. Yeah. So anyway, I just wanted to share that with uh, Flamor. What does that say on there? Is that French? Yeah, it's French, but fortunately I speak French too. It says that uh, mm, uh, with high spirit, uh, uh, with high spirit we go uh, in a revolutionary way. Oh, okay. Something <laughs> like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's got the red and the red star, you know. Yeah. So I just thought I would share that with you. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. That's lovely. Piece of history. Ron, what, what do you think like is I your oldest? Use my lower uh, Radio Africa. South Africa. Oh, and, and when did you? 1975. Wow. Wow. That was uh, before, while there was still the old government. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah, the apartheid government. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. What do oh, you collect wow. again? Uh, it's uh, QSL cards. Uh, can you say that uh, more slowly? Q oh, QSL. What does it mean? Uh, Donna can tell you. It's, it's amateur radio lingo. QSL means I uh, have received. Right. Yeah, it means I have received your transmission. Yeah. So Ron receives the foreign transmission and tells the station, and they send back a card saying, "Thank you confirming for it. yeah confirming yeah. that you heard the station." Yeah. yeah. What What's your newest one, Ron, that you've received? WW uh, WWCR out of Nashville. Oh yeah, Christian radio station. Yeah. Yeah, I never have gotten one from them, and I I got it about two months ago. And I called them. I said, "Do you still mail out the old-fashioned?" They said, "Yeah." So I I wrote them an old-fashioned reception report and then a letter, and they yeah. sent me an old-fashioned to us out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Have you got one from uh, Canadian Broadcasting? Because they're no longer doing shortwave. I yeah, understand. I've got I got three or four from them. I used to listen to them a lot. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of countries are stopping their shortwave radio transmissions thinking that there's not enough people around the world listening but from what I hear there's still a lot of folks listening to shortwave radio all over the place yeah I got two shortwave radios at home just in case you know yeah. I got my little uh, wind up uh, one yeah wow and then how do you find the addresses? Do you have the radio handbook or something to find where to write to to get those? Yeah, I used to have a friend. When I lived in Memphis, he would buy the new WRTH, and he would always pass down the uh, the old one to me. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, I remember back in the 80s when I started getting interested in radio stuff, I'd go to the library and look up all that, and, that was, boy, that was tedious, you know, trying to find the library that had the book and then handwriting everything out of the book. They still print the, they still print the WRTH. Yeah, I think so, that's for sure, yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. yeah. World Radio and TV Handbook, yeah. yeah I probably got it. I, I think I broke down and bought one probably in the 90s. I might have one or two of those from 1992 or something. Mm -hmm. But it's, you know, it's just fascinating reading because it tells you all the frequencies where you can find these uh, different broadcasters and a little bit about the countries and uh, just fascinating reading. I've got a QSL uh, one powered station in New York. It's a nice talking to every one of you. I must go. Goodbye, everyone. Okay. Okay. Bye, bye, yeah, everybody. Good, yeah. good seeing you again. Goodbye. Nice meeting you. Yeah, Flamur Casa. He's a student. As I recall, I think he's an engineering student or maybe computer student uh, over there. And I, I think I originally met him here on uh, Google Hangouts uh, whenever mm -hmm. that started up. Very intelligent guy and obviously knows many languages like most of us don't. 
Yeah. Hey. I can speak yeah, a little bit of Albanian. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. Uh, uh, Mim and Jess is good morning. Uh, Medita is a good day. Uh huh. Yeah. But uh, when I worked at the casino before I was fired, uh, there was several. There was a lot of people from Kosovo, and they uh, usually spoke uh, uh, Albanian or uh, a couple other langu- regional languages. Excuse oh, me, guys. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So how you been, Benny? Oh, I've been all right. You're in Florida too, aren't you? No. Nope. Same weather, different hemisphere. Yeah, he's, oh, okay. he's in Hawaii. Hawaii. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah, my video is still uh, being processed. Uh, yeah, I'm just wondering if I had like the fastest computer, how much faster would videos be processed? I don't know. Are you you're talking know about the. Go ahead. Yeah, I've got a. I did a oh. flip video. I did. There's a political uh, meeting with all the political candidates here in our neighborhood a couple hours ago. So I probably got about a half an hour long video, and it's probably been processing oh. on my computer for you know a couple hours now. Oh, you, what do you uh, mean by process- processing? Yeah. Well, it was made up of uh, like 39 different pieces, 39 different sections, and then it has to stitch them all together to make the one video. So the what computer is, is putting them all together. Uh, the flip video uh, program. Okay, so that's flip where I'm going to Yeah. Yeah, all right. And then, of course, after that's done, then I upload it to YouTube, and uh, depending on which... Uh, Wi-Fi outlet I can use. It it can take from hours to uh, maybe a half an hour, I would guess. (laughs) Yeah, just about. Well, does Flip TV, uh, they have their own cloud uh, video processing, correct? Well, they used to. Uh, Flip is no longer, Flip cameras are no longer being made. They were made by Cisco, and Cisco decided to get out of the uh, video. Oh, okay. I thought you were talking about a site. So yeah. you were. And they used to have a you club recorded. you could upload your. Oh, but you recorded with a flip video camera. Right. And yeah, okay, so recorded. you're using whatever software that came with it. Yeah, exactly. And to do the editing. So you're processing it locally on your computer, not through the cloud. Right. Yeah. And and so the long. answer to the original question would be probably quite a bit because yeah. the newer processors are oh, very okay. adept at uh, doing transcoding and uh, you know one of the yeah. places where an i7 for instance shines is in video processing. Okay, so uh, you think I could uh, cut down the time by an order of like three or four? That's possible. Maybe or yeah. even more? Yeah, I'm not sure what you're running there but wow. it's possible. Yeah. Yeah, because no, I mean normally I don't have that long cash. of a video. Yeah, yeah, normally I'll do you, you know maybe it. ten minutes. Well, the program is converting it to whatever it converts it to. I can't even remember the format. Yeah, there's there's so many. Uh, what really ma- makes me pisses me off is there's so many codecs for video, and yeah. so when I'm sitting there and I want to record on my webcam. You know, I got an issue when I got my handheld cam and I use it. <coughs> you know, you got all these different formats, so you go. But you know, YouTube. I, I tried recording over the cloud with YouTube, and it it doesn't. Eh, I don't know. It's kind of laggy. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I've had that problem crop up several times where I, I've got use a certain camera and then I try to upload it to a particular web uh, site and it won't take that format. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They do that on purpose. Why? <laughs> well, I don't know. It just uh, I, one reason may be to so people can sell their proprietary softwares which with their licensed codecs and then the competitor can sell their proprietary software with their licensed codecs. Uh. 
yeah. YouTube will take just about anything you want to throw at it. Yeah. Um, yeah but right. I find that uh, if I keep the process settled on a certain resolution, like capture in 720p, and then uh, upload H.264 with 1280 by 720 um, to YouTube, the quality gets preserved pretty well. Oh, uh huh. I call it out. Yeah, I'd seen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'd, I'd read some sort of notes uh, YouTube has about the formats they uh, recommend. And uh, as I was reading it, it was pretty complex, it seemed like, when I was trying to figure that out. Yeah, you want to try and keep the resolution transcoding uh, to a minimum of zero if you can get it. So if yeah, you capture exactly. 720p or 1080p and then upload that, uh, you know, whether you're using H.264 or something similar for compression to reduce the size of the yeah. file. Exactly. You can preserve a lot of the original quality that way. Yeah. It seemed like the Did videos anybody, you were uh, uploading before were uh, pretty good quality, Don. The flip camera videos that you shot uh, when you were uh, in Ohio, they look pretty good to me. Yeah. Yeah, they are. Uh, now, a couple of them, uh, YouTube apparently has a... Uh, a uh, feature that will uh, uh, detect any motion or something or jerking it, and then they ask if you want to uh, have YouTube fix it. Now, I haven't studied that quite very much, although I think, Benny, you noticed one of those and you indicated they kind of cut down on the size or something, yeah, as I recall. To. They all work that but, way. They yeah. have it in camera. They have it in editors. My premier editor has a plug-in that does that, and uh, basically they... Yeah. Um, they can see the pixels from frame to frame, and they can line them up. But as they line them up, the frame moves around, and that consequently makes it so that part of the frame is going off, and they have to reduce the size of the original in order to keep the frame intact. Yeah. Yeah, because I was kind of surprised when I saw because I thought, well, gee, I'm holding my camera pretty steady. I was pretty proud of myself. And then here you two comes along and says, oh, you're... Her video is a bit shaky. Do you want us to fix it? <laughs> so at least they could have said, uh, you did a good job, but maybe we can help you out <laughs> or something. <laughs> <laughs> or did you mean? Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Did you mean to do uh, this? The funny, <laughs> yeah, the funny thing was, Don, I just saw those videos because I was doing some research for a friend of mine. She's going to be going on a road trip with her sister. To uh, they've been doing some genealogical studies, and they can't track down this like six generations back aunt, and so they thought, ah, oh, road trip, you know. So they're going to go and and see if they can find the documents they want and make a sisterly road trip at the same time. And I t sort of turned her on to maps, and of course, while I was signed in, I found your Google Map of your road trip and yeah. it had link, links in it to your YouTube video uh -huh. and I'm going to uh, show her that what she can do and she had no idea maps you could do so much with maps yeah and I uh, showed her my uh, the one of my uh, English language practice people that right. I've been keeping yeah and um, the uh, I'm going to show her that and also she doesn't uh, very few people know that you have if you have an account you have unlimited Google sites with free hosting right right uh -huh. and I'm thinking I could turn her onto that and get her a uh, just get her a site so that she could um, she could blog at the same time she was wondering if she would you know, take the time to blog and I thought maybe if everything were in one place yeah. for example had, does anybody have a Google site? No, I do. I have many. Yeah. Okay. The uh, the announcements page pages work just like a blog. Oh, and okay. Could, have you you I'm, know have you not, noticed not even the with that one? The announcements. I haven't even looked at that. Have you ever started a new page and they give you mm, a um, not they give recently. you a choice? Yeah, it might be why I don't know because I haven't started a new one. Yeah, they give you a choice of starting with a web page or announcements or this or that or the other. An announcements oh. page works just like a blog. Yeah, I see what you mean, yeah. Although I'm just thinking uh, from my experience of, because I've got the blog and the sites, 
the blog seems to be considerably easier to, to do because you don't have to really go through designing stuff and all kinds of different choices and things. Well, the and nice thing about the site is that you can embed uh, calendars anywhere you want. You can embed, uh, you know, just by in inserting the widgets. Right. You can embed anything in a page. Uh, I just did that with, I embedded a map and a calendar. I had to do a workaround. I wanted a calendar for my Google Plus page for practice hangouts uh -huh. and Plus pages do not support a calendar. You cannot put a link to a calendar. Oh, yeah. So what I did was I made a bare bones site and link and inserted a calendar in a page and then uh -huh. linked to that page. I did, yeah. So and you know I was kind of annoyed. Don't tell me I can't do what I want. Yeah, right. <laughs> Well, uh, I've been using my blog when, uh, for years, and over the years they've updated it to new versions, and I was always afraid to update it, fearing I'd lose something. So mm -hmm. I've got, I think, the original version, which is lacking a lot of the new features, apparently, but I'm just scared to death to try to uh, click the thing that says uh, update it to the latest version or something. I know. Well, here's what I did. Uh, let's see. Let me share the screen. Da, 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 da. Screen share. Okay, this is the uh, about page on, on the English language practice hangouts. So from here, uh, I did the Google Map where you can where you can visit that here, and a calendar. What I did was I uh, embedded a calendar in a uh, Google Map in a uh, Google Sites page because uh -huh. you can't put a calendar in a Google Plus page. Right. So that was my workaround. That's very annoying. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yep. How did Ron do what he did there? Did he just uh, put up a full screen image file and? Uh, and mute his mic, or is that some? Did I miss a memo? <laughs> well, I'm I'm seeing error kind of messages on my end because of my computer messing up. I'm getting a message now that says "Hang up, muted, be right back." Yeah, that's cool. How do you did you do that on purpose? No, it's I think it's because I'm running out of memory or running out no, of no, CPU I, and I, it's doing I that. I think I think that's Ron. I think what he did, unless he corrects me. Uh, I think he just created a graphic, showed it full screen, muted his mic, and you know. Oh, do something. okay. I like it, it. Did you do that, Ron? Yeah, because I saw we'll pop up a few times. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, we gotta wait and ask him, don't we? Yeah, because yeah. I thought it was just mine that was messing up. Because I'm not seeing everybody's uh, video pop up when you talk. Hmm. Did you blue box somebody, maybe? No, it's just that everything's running real slow because it's still processing that video. Oh. oh, you're doing the processing while you're in the Hangout, of course. Yeah, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah, I was I was hoping it would have been done by the time I started the Hangout, but it's uh, obviously not. Did mm -hmm. I miss something? What video are you, are you processing? Well, I, I went to a political, uh, we had a little neighborhood political uh, thing with all the candidates, so I video, videoed about 30 different candidates and um, could pu put them all together into one one movie and uh, the computer's now processing that into the movie. Now yeah, there's the uh, hangout muted sign. Mm -hmm. yeah, I like he must it. Not have mic he might not have muted his mic and so when he's uh, making noise it's uh, popping up. Oh. oh, that's it. Yeah, I can oh, see, I see. Uh, I can see yeah. a little green line now and then. Yep, yeah. that's what it is. So I have to remind him when he puts that up to mute his mic. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out what how he would use that because it would uh, it's working just the opposite of how it should be, kind of. <laughs> well, if he muted his mic, it would it would be an ideal way to handle the situation where you need to step away for a second and you don't want to interrupt, right? You just put uh -huh. the graphic up, mute your mic, and walk away. Yeah, but you'd have to have your mic making noise for it to pop up, though, wouldn't you? Unless you were blue boxing oh, it. 
I don't think he means for it to be popping up. I think he wants it to not be popping up. But mm -hmm. he forgot to mute his mic. Uh huh. I like it. Yeah, it's cool. Good idea. Yeah, Ron is pretty handy at using his uh, drawing tools for uh -huh. graphics. Yep, his lower thirds are usually pretty interesting. Yeah, I haven't found, figured out how to manip manipulate the lower thirds. Um, let's see, I've got a, uh, let's see, lower third. I think I've got, oh, it's uh, one of them is, uh, I've got the flag of, flag of the world. Are you using the select logo to put your graphic up? Uh-huh. It's not mm -hmm. coming up, though. You have to probably shut it off and turn it back on. Could yeah, you have to have it off while you're uh, editing it. Yeah, shut it off, select the, the graphic, and then turn it back on. Okay. Taking a while. One funny thing I've noticed about the Lower Third uh, app is that sometimes when I select the color blue, um, it'll come up black. Oh. And I, I kind of like that, actually. Um, but it, black is not a selection. <laughs> but I'll uh -huh. get it by, by luck sometimes. And it kind of lines up with the lower third of my graphic. So it almost looks like it's on purpose, the way it looks. Yeah, well, it would that's be, interesting. Yeah, Why well, it's not coming back up? Hmm. What if it could be a product of mixing with whatever color is behind it or something? No, I don't know. It just seems to come up occasionally when when I select the color, it hmm. comes up black. Let me try selecting something else and going back. See if I can make it change. Yeah, today it's working just fine. Uh, now I'm having Lisa's problem. Can't get it to come back up. Not coming back up, yeah. I've mm -hmm. tried it several times. Oh, well. Hangouts, you know, it, I find it hard to complain because Hangouts is so cool. Yeah. But I don't want to fuss about it too much. <laughs> yeah, I just discovered uh, through Kevin Shoup a website called audioboo.fm and uh, it appears the purpose of it is that you can leave audio uh, little clips of several minutes and then people can listen to them and you can favorite people and stuff and it seems I don't know why it seems cool to me because <laughs> it's just audio it's, it's Twitter, like audio Twitter, I guess. You could say. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I, I'm, I'm still exploring it to try to figure out why it seems cooler, because I'm, I'm sure I've done that kind of thing before over the years, leaving audio little messages and stuff. Uh, well, well, he had. I guess I was following some of Kevin's links, and so he had some of the coolest people on there. So I was listening to their little compilations, and maybe it's just that the uh, the quality of the stuff uh, or the interest of the stuff on there was a bit better than in past years. So I'm going to have to play around with that a little bit more. And then, and that led me to a. Uh, a guy who does a uh, hangout on air, a contem contemplative hangout on air. And it's a, apparently an English guy, and he'll just uh, turn on the camera and sit there and meditate for 10 minutes. And he apparently does it every two hours. So you can watch him meditate every two hours, and then people can join him in that. And I guess he's, since it's an on-air thing, he's selecting who can be on there. And it's interesting just to see people either being silent with him, or in one case there was a father and his little child watching. Of course, the child was not going to be quiet for anything. So it was kind of a contrast between him meditating and this kid uh, just chattering away. <laughs> but it was just very interesting. 
Have you heard of the silent writing hangouts? No. no. They're a group of writers, or you know, somebody will call a silent writing hangout, and the reason for it is that uh, writers who have really, really full lives, they just they get on and they have to be absolutely silent and just work. Uh, and that's all they do. Uh -huh. And they're, they're sort of like monitoring each other. You're not doing anything else, are you? Then they have to be absolutely quiet and work for an hour. And uh -huh. that, way they can, that way they can take time. You know, these are full-time moms usually or dads or, you know, and they have 15,000 things to do. And that's just to make themselves right for uh -huh. an hour or two and keep yeah. an eye on each other. Are you writing? You're right. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> and the only uh, the only requirement is you have to be absolutely quiet and you have to work. Wow. Yeah. So it's sort of like starting a blog to lose weight. You know, keeping an yeah. eye out. <laughs> well, Kevin uh, also had made some posting this week about wanting to start with some other friends a hangout based on changing lifestyles or specifically dieting I guess and I had thought about that earlier this week and, and did a little a little bit of that just putting it out there to see if anybody would be interested in joining a group where you try to change your habits or something but I'm thinking it probably is not going to fly unless you just literally have some friends who are already interested in doing that because, you, get, you know, probably a bunch of strangers are probably not going to feel comfortable talking mm -hmm. about dieting together or something. But it's just amazing the different things you can do on a hangout or the ideas you could come up with to use it for something. Even Almost. something like absolute silence. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's uh, Nick Holloway, I think you're talking about. Yep, that, that's that it. And he's gotten involved with, yeah. yeah and there's exactly. other groups doing the same thing, too. The uh -huh. weightless group and a couple others. Yeah. Now, I've found that there's uh, got kind of an offshoot of the English language practice hangouts. Uh, a couple of people have offered to help each other uh, practice their respective languages. And oh. so last night... Night, I think it was last night, someone, oh, I was going to get someone, Monica, um, M. Monica, she speaks Spanish, and this guy wanted to, he, he was talking with me, and he said, well, I could help someone with their Spanish, and I said, let me hook you up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, and several people have said, you know, well, I could, you know, I could do that, and I said, well, you could do that. Yeah. And very often, once you're getting some help, you think, well, how can I help? So it's very, it's fun. Yeah, exactly. I was looking back at my calendar, and when I started, before I was having connection problems, when I started in August of last year, I only did it for like two and a half months, but I got a little burned out. I was doing like five and six days a week. Uh-huh. And... Um, and I realized, too, when I had to quit, it was kind of a relief. And I didn't realize there was a bit of performance anxiety there because oh, I've never yeah. done any, anything like it before. Yeah. So then uh, you started back and got back into the swing of things again. Do you, were you doing it as much as you started out doing or you're doing a little less than that, aren't you? I'm working a lot more, so I, I cut it down to three times a week. Yeah. Yeah, how's and that house? I, uh, it's coming. <laughs> uh, actually, we're practicing on the apartment, and uh -huh. uh, all the skills we'll need to do the house. And the benefit to that will be if we get stuck between houses. You know how people get stuck between houses. One is sold and one's not ready. Uh -huh. uh, then they pour their money down uh the rent bucket, oh. and then if we had to rent, then we wouldn't be able to finish the house. Yeah. So we're practicing on the we're practicing on the apartment, and once we've got that ready, then we can start on the house. Of course, it's oh, half wow. it's half finished. So and yeah. all the skills we needed to do the house, like I found, uh, my husband doesn't love to do sheetrock, but I love to tape and float sheetrock, and we got a um, we got a, 
an estimate from a guy who to do um, taping and floating and texturing. <laughs> well, uh -huh. I know what to do with five hundred dollars. So I got on YouTube and I learned <laughs> how to do it myself. <laughs> so uh -huh. I uh, so I taped and floated and textured and we painted last week. Yeah. So now I when you say text. Yeah, when you when you say texture, what what do you mean by that? Okay, I'll show you. The uh let me look at my I put it up on my uh on the That's the stuff you buy from Home Depot in a spray can, isn't it? Uh yes and no. Uh what we did was we um it's the texture underneath the paint on a house. Let me see my uh, let me go to my Shoot, I have so many things. Yeah, anyway, I that, down here I've heard the term orange peeling, and I'm not sure if that's a universal term everywhere where they spray orange on peel or is, something. Orange peel is a special, a, a particular kind of texture where they spray the stuff on, and it's um, real, real thin, and it makes a very, very subtle texture. Uh huh. And we wanted a subtle texture too, but we didn't want to spray anything because uh -huh. we have cedar ceilings. Okay. And if you'll, here's the uh, here's the link to the album. And uh, in the last, in the last few pictures, it shows the texture. And, and how do you get the texture on there? Uh, we um, we watered down sheetrock mud. And then you slap it with this, this this thing called a slap brush or crow's foot, uh -huh. and it makes a beautiful texture. And when it dries, you paint it. And uh, right at okay. the end is the texture. Uh, the fourth from last picture is the texture. We wanted something real, real subtle. Oh yeah. And that's uh -huh. such a close up. Yeah. Sometime uh, so we, soon, I think really I'm gonna. Like yeah, I'm going to have to have some ceiling repairs where there's been some water damage. You know, I'm just wondering, would a skilled tradesman know how to match a existing texture, or do they have to just do an entire ceiling to make it look good? To yeah, make it look good, around. I'm sure they'd have to do the whole room. Oh. You could actually try this. Go to the link and see if you don't think that's pretty easy. Of course, you'd have to uh, tape tape and mask the whole room. Yeah. Yeah. In my so earlier days, I'd, I'd be willing to tackle something like that myself. But boy, nowadays I'm just uh, have no oh, desire me. to do all that. Believe me, there are some texturing muscles. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. And I found well, I, um, as you can see on there, uh, we do everything ourselves. But I love to paint. I found out I love to paint. I'd never painted anything before, and I got on YouTube and and did it. Looked at a series of vi videos, and we ended up doing a great job. Yeah, wow. I love YouTube. Yeah, my most or uh, only energetic job I can seem to get any energy to do anymore is just to use the uh, lawnmower to cut the grass and that's, uh, and that's an exhausting job because I just got a regular push mower mm -hmm. but, but any other manual labor I'm just completely will run away from it anymore mm -hmm. I get it <laughs> we which just is have weird no cause it, yeah well, well me too but uh, you know 20 years ago I'd be uh, just eager to do anything even if I didn't know how to do it I would just go in there and give it a try uh huh. That's Don. He's not afraid of anything. He just says, "Yeah, we can do that," and he yeah. jumps right in. And we learn as we go. He even learned to pour concrete. Yeah. Yeah, it's just all kinds of little chores around the house. So that yes, I would easily tackle them. But boy, you know, I don't even want to think about it anymore. I know the yeah. feeling. Uh, did, you, uh, did you like did you did you click back? U T B H used to be handy. Used to be handy. I like it. <laughs> yeah. 
That's what money is for. Right. Did you, uh, did, I'm so proud of our cedar ceiling. Did you uh, click back and see the cedar ceiling? Yeah, I'll have to do it later because uh, my uh, oh, yeah. computer is so slow at the moment uh, I can't even get to anywhere. Yeah. Uh, what happened was we needed a really, we're, we're, this, we're doing the apartment on the scrounge. We need really cheap stuff. So we were, uh, we were needed, we priced everything. We needed $400 for a ceiling. Well, that just wouldn't do. So I got some cold cedar pickets from a Craigslist posting, which was like about $200 total. And he just slapped up cedar pickets. He cut them uh, to size and put them up. Yeah. So yeah. and it looks gorgeous and smells great too. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, and then the cedar, I guess, you, the forever. You just if you wanted to bring that smell out again over a few years, you just little standing or something and it brings out uh -huh. the smell again. Well, it's fairly rough, so I'll be uh, I'll be brushing it with a broom fairly often and uh -huh. that should bring up the smell every time. Yeah. Because Texas has spiders, I'll tell you. Yeah. I can remember we used to have, uh, up north we have cedar chests my mom would have and put all the woolens and that stuff in to protect it from moss. I don't know if that's still a common thing oh, yeah. or not. Yeah. yeah, they sell real thin uh, pieces of cedar uh, Cedar planks, they're oh, probably an eighth of an inch thick, and you line your closet with it to make your whole closet uh -huh. into a cedar chest. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's right. So in Miami, like I actually had a cedar uh, chest. Yeah, I had, now I think about it, I had uh, cedar lined closets in Miami. I, they must have been so old I didn't smell anything, but they definitely were cedar now that I think about it. Mm hmm. But. The whole place smells like cedar. It's great. It's like it's like having shoe trees around, or you know, being yeah. in a cedar cedar chest. Oh, <gasps> Remember hiding in the cedar chest when you were a tiny kid? I don't think I ever did that. <laughs> well, I think we I would were, have been in big trouble. If we were. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say that there was the trouble factor when your mom couldn't find you. Yeah. Although I don't know why we didn't now that I think about it. That surely would have been fun just to hop in that cedar chest. Uh-huh. Wow. It was probably usually full. Yeah. In fact, I wonder if my mom still has a cedar chest because that was like one of her prized possessions for a long time. That was that was a uh, usually a very, the very most expensive wedding gift. Yeah. Uh, between 50 and 100 years ago, you know, you had your, well, and some people, they gave their young girls a cedar chest, and they did uh -huh. their hope chest over yeah. the years. All right. Well, well, guys and gals, I think I'm going to close down my end of this uh, hangout here. I haven't. An hour is an hour's good for a hangout. Yeah, I, I think it's probably a good good time. Although I watched that, I uh, uh, keep forgetting the guy's name, but he has this Google Plus uh, Friday night thing. Uh, it goes on for like three hours or so, and he always comes up with some interesting news about Google Plus and stuff, but to have to sit through the three hours is a little tedious. It's a little Ron McDermott, something McDermott. The yeah, Dermot McDermott, McDermott report. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty, you know, they got some smart people on there, but boy, three hours is a long time. So whenever well, I get the, the uh, interview of Vic and Dutra the other day, yesterday, yeah, I think. Yeah, I saw I that. It's really good. Oh, yeah. 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 What, I, what I end up doing is, is uh, hooking up my uh, uh, Walkman in my little FM transmitter, and then I just go outside or, you know, do my normal stuff and just listen to it instead of uh, watching it at oh, the I computer. Oh, I need to do that. In fact, it, it made me think, you know, if we're using video, we probably should be thinking more about making it more exciting to actually watch because most of the stuff you can just listen to and get the full meaning out of it. Mm -hmm. Yep. And so, uh, although, you know, like Vinny and, and, and does a lot of that, though, whenever he's around because he'll, like, throw up the screenshots and the demonstrations. 
And I think that's probably more appropriate for uh, Hangouts to show us uh -huh. a lot of vi uh, video stuff. I have something to show off. Did you hear about the NBC's debacle of the coverage of the Olympics? No. What, what was that? Oh, they were they were just awful. They were so ignorant. Um, oh yeah, yeah. I know what you mean. Okay. Just, yeah. Yeah. So I I made a um, I made a um, graphic this morning. Oh, you're morning. posting. Yeah. So. Yeah. Did you see it? <laughs> I'm just horrible, yeah. but that was yeah. That was kind of fun. Uh, let's see. Here it is. And I'm I'm trying to use screen share more often. Uh, let's see if I've got the right thing. Yeah, that's it. There you go. <laughs> oh yeah. So occasionally, when I have an opinion, I'll do it visually. So that's my uh, show and tell this morning for our this Very afternoon, good. guys. Yeah, I I watched uh, that Olympics and I was like really looking forward, thinking it as exciting as the uh, China one, but boy, it wasn't even close. Uh, I'm thinking there must have been a lot of inside stuff in there that would only British people would really appreciate or something, but I yeah. couldn't get into it. Did you see the video that the uh, that the uh, British did as a as a prelude to the to the opening games? They did with uh, James Bond. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. That King was the very, helicopter. That yeah. was yeah. awesome. They are just. I love British. And I love the yeah. I love the Tim Berners Lee section too. That's that's where that's what drove me to. <laughs> Drove me to make the graphic. It really did. Uh -huh. well, I was thinking I was getting tired, and so maybe my enthusiasm was lacking just because I was tired. In fact, when they started doing the countries coming through, I went to sleep. I just couldn't stay up late enough to watch all the countries coming through. Well, that's so what I was thinking of the Tim Berners Lee debacle. You know, isn't there like a isn't there like a, a hand signal or something? You know, you can stare at, at one of your people and say, uh, I need to know who this guy is like five seconds ago. Yeah. Um, you know, <laughs> how, how ignorant do you want to look? All right. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I thought it was a bit odd, you know, during the beginning they were having the common, you know, the guest <coughs> commentators over the show and it, it just seemed like it was like a parade or something where they always say these stupid things. Because mm -hmm. I mean, oh, theoretically, there's a, uh, there's a thing on called Matt Lauer Shut Up. Uh -huh. <laughs> did you did you catch that? Yeah. No. <laughs> oh, do you, do you, would you have a link to that, um, Benny? I can't remember where no. that link was, but anyway, there was a there was a page called Matt Lauer Shut Up. Yeah. yeah, he's been getting a lot of flack in the press lately, that's for sure. All right, well, it's been fun as usual, gang, so I'll say adieu Thank to uh, Ian and Lisa and Vinny and Ron. Is Ron there? Ron, are you still around yeah. there? Yeah, you? I had to okay. eat dinner and then I came, I came okay. back, yeah. Yeah, yeah we, we were seeing your little uh, uh, mute uh, sign there. Yeah, well, I had a hamburger. <laughs> when I came on, there was a hamburger cooking, so I had to put my cheese on and fix it up and uh, cut up some onions and add some chips yeah. and add some milk. So I decided I wouldn't Did you make that little graphic? Ron, did you make no, that little you know graphic? What? Actually, no, actually, you know, I had the hangout. I had the volume control, and uh, I can mute the hangout, but that was a counterfeit. I just copied it and put it up, you know. I wasn't that was muted. just a full screen graphic, right? And you, mm -hmm. Yeah, you need to mute your mic when you're going to be away like that because every time you'd bang a pan or something, it would take over the big screen. Yeah, I'm pretty I'm pretty quiet. I don't think anybody <laughs> heard me. <laughs> okay, it popped up a couple times while you were away. Oh, okay. <laughs> All yeah, right. Don, yeah, Don thinking he had a problem. <laughs> well, I was, trying, I was trying to figure out how you would use that because it was kind of uh, being in use the opposite way. You know, whenever you, whenever you made a noise, it was coming up instead of uh, when you were muting. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just kind of funny. All right. Okay, it's uh, 515 here in Florida. 
And thank everybody for coming along, and we'll see you the next time in Google right. Hangouts. Enjoy it, Don. YouTube. All right, thanks a lot, everybody. We'll see bye. you later. All right, bye. bye. <laughs>